Welcome to the CoinPros Crypto Talk Hour, hosted by Randall Parker Jr. and airing every Wednesday evening from 7.30 to 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Bringing you up-to-date news, prices, coin information, interviews, contests, giveaways, and much more. Tune in every Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Help us take money back from the state. Okay, everybody, we are here live with Joel. Um, we are uh, here to talk about the Swarm Coin Project, Swarm Corp. And uh, Joel Dietz is one of the uh, one of the core guys over there at Swarm. Say hi, uh, Joel. Hello, everyone. Joel has been making his rounds. Uh, I'm actually really fortunate to have him today. Uh, today is actually just so the audience knows we're recording this interview uh, in the afternoon of Monday on the East Coast uh, U.S. time. And uh, Joel had just uh, bounced around and done a couple other interviews today. That's right, Joel, huh? That's correct. Yeah, I was, you know, bouncing around in London, talking to folks from The Economist, uh, Max Kaiser, a few other places. So, but um, yeah, very happy to be here as well. So, we're, we're in great company. Glad to have you. Won't take up too much of your time. Want to make sure that everybody in our audience gets a chance to find out what Swarm is. And I was actually exposed to it um, two weeks ago, two or three weeks ago. I, I interviewed Evan Wagner, Counterparty, and. Uh, he obviously has uh, pretty uh, pretty close ties with you guys, and uh, that's where I first found out about Swarm Corporation, and uh, it's truly fascinating. It re I mean, it really blew me away. Why don't you take a second and just kind of tell everyone a little bit of a kind of elevator pitch of what, what we're dealing with here. What is Swarm Corporation? What is the project? Yeah, um, we're the first real crypto equity platform, and... You know, we think kind of that crypto equity is to equity what sort of cryptocurrency was to currency. It's a way of, um, you know, putting things directly into the hands of people, um, allowing everything to be peer-to-peer -peer and sort of allowing also the sort of programmable aspect where people have complete control over the offering instead of being forced into a particular model. So, um, you know, what that means at the moment is, um, you know, and it's not exactly the same thing as equity, you know, it's more like kind of going back to the very root level and saying what rights do these sort of tokens have and, you know, what rights do my users have? And that can include things like the ability to vote on, you know, how funds are dispersed or the future direction of a project or, you know, things like that you would associate with traditional equity, um, you know, like a sort of revenue share or, um, you know, preference in a kind of liquidation event um, and basically you know in a standard legal structure you're kind of forced into like here is the way to do things um, and crypto equity is opening up this whole new world of possibilities where it's sort of um, like we're giving you a toolkit and you can design the sort of system that uh, is most appropriate to your needs and the needs of a particular project. Um, and one of the really exciting things about this is it includes all these new possibilities for sort of digital democracy where the users are directly engaged and actually asked what they think um, about the future of a project, which um, is not something that happens, um, sadly, very often in kind of um, any you know, normal thing. I mean, usually you have a very clear gap between your users and your investors, um, and your investors basically have all the control. Um, and, and obviously there is a reason for investors to have control if they put in you know, money and are kind of financing things. But um, you know, this has been a perpetual problem in the growth of any kind of project that has a kind of community aspect to it, even something like Bitcoin, where you know, the, the, these kind of organizations, their private um, corporations, have a particular agenda um, you know, to maximize their own profit. Um, and um, that's, you know, whatever it is, what it is. But, um, you know, sometimes that conflicts with the users of a particular platform. Um, right. So we're kind of seeing this real interesting possibilities emerge um, through the power of kind of distributed networks and the, and the blockchain in particular. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm a huge... Um, are you getting a little feedback there? Yeah, yeah. 
No, no, I'm fine. I said we should um, mention our new blog, uh, blog.swarmcorp.com, because we have our new, which is really the first, uh, you may be the first to see it, but um, our first sort of digital democracy proposal up there, um, which is us engaging with our audience, um, you know, to say everyone who's participating in our fundraiser so far, we've raised, you know, uh, not quite, but close to, you know, a million U.S. dollars and, you know, our own sort of crypto Kickstarter, um, uh, basically now has the opportunity to kind of vote on how we uh, operate with kind of, you know, how our funds are dispersed, whether or not we lock them and um, these sort of things. So it's kind of like the first thing, sort of in, interestingly enough, it's in the run-up to July 4th, which is a very important, you know, day in the United States, and that's my homeland. So <laughs> um, and I, I like the idea of, you know, independence, um, but it doesn't seem to be quite as popular these days, at least in the finance sector. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I totally, I, I totally know where you're coming from, and I just want to jump in real quick and say Swarm Corp, Corp uh, is a project that's near and dear to me because of a lot of the fundamental values and ethics and ethos behind it. Um, kind of diving into a little bit of that and, and touching on some of the things you said, um, you know, the Fourth of July, democracy. These concepts are starting. I mean, and, and as you know, you're you're being imbued on the Voluntary Virtues Network, where we we focus on the philosophy of uh, political and social organization and try to decide what's the most um, voluntary and um, non-aggressive way to organize ourselves um, as people. So, in light of all that, and and I think what what Swarm Corp really opens up possibility towards, or not even possibility towards, but really just completely enables, if I'm not mistaken, is the ability for individuals to create their own organizations, their own corporate structures with any type of guidelines or, I mean, I could issue one share, a thousand shares, I can issue a share to a thousand people, two people, one people, I can give shares to the gardener, I can give shares to my kids, I can give shares to the TV and the lamp if I want. With Swarm Corp, it's really up to the individual project to decide how the equity or the funding will go and Swarm Corp is just kind of a back end or a or an infrastructure that allows uh, businesses to be public and open about how they are doing things, and to and to also share the possible reward with the possible you know the intended users of the product in some sense as well. Is that correct? Yeah, that's a very good way of phrasing it. So I, I don't know about sharing with the lamp in particular, since <laughs> that'd be a bad idea, probably. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, that's exactly what we're trying to empower, and that kind of experimental aspect as well, in the sense that this is kind of like a toolkit that opens up a lot of different possibilities, and, um, you know, right now, we're, it's interesting, but the corporation, I think, that we're all used to thinking of is a, is a particular innovation that happened at a particular time in history, and then it's like, boom, like, now we have corporations, and then everything's been done kind of since then, and... And basically, uh, it hasn't innovated. Like corporate structure has not really been innovated around in you know over you know a half century, if not more than that. Um, so you know people add on these little tweaks to it. But this is kind of going back to the very root and saying, what does it mean to have a corporation, a kind of common you know uh, endeavor? And you're right. Like there's all these different possibilities that you can do um, that just have never been tried before. Uh, and, and they Sorry, just to just to play off that a little bit because I, I know what kind of audience I have and I want to keep them engaged too with these ideas because this they, people don't realize I'm trying to show the crypto community that this these philosophical and um, you know moral ideas are relevant to the technology they're using and then vice versa to show the the moral and philosophical people that yo know, this is a this is a type of technology type of currency or type of platform that we need to get behind as a moral community as a as a philosophical yeah. community. So there's a huge link, and that's what this program's here to, to point out. So just to show people, because people hear terms and they get all bent out of shape. They hear democracy or they hear community or, um, you know, collective or something. And these are loaded up with left or right wing affiliated uh, meanings. And that's, like you said, the word corporation itself is only a term that's been fabricated for a couple hundred years. So when we say we're just talking about parties sharing in a common purpose with equity interest. I mean, that's the thing. We always went to the state. We always went to the, the central authority, which has always been the state, to say, all right, I want to form an organization. Grant me the right to do so, first of all, and then please acknowledge all my partners. Please acknowledge all my guidelines. And, and the frank matter of the situation is that the Internet has completely made the state, uh, frankly, irrelevant, in my view, and uh, to where companies such as yourself and platforms such as Counterparty kind of open up 
the floodgates to just really bright individuals with visions being able to implement their their visions and uh, give ownership to those parties who who want to want to be the, uh, the early adopters and the front runners. Kind of rewards people for for sticking their neck out. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that that's all we needed. You know. So. Um, in fact, uh, this is one of the, the greatest criticisms I have of these sort of communal efforts is that everyone kind of ends up equalized and then there's, you know, and I think it, having good incentive structures for saying who are the people who are willing to go out and take a risk to actually innovate is pretty positive because, um, you know, there's always a sort of inertia that exists um, in, in every sort of human being. Um, but then when you really provide good incentive structures, then people go out and do things that maybe do otherwise, and there's all this creative energy and innovation that's because of so. And I want to ask you a direct question. You can totally not answer it or answer it indirectly if you have to. Um, but with regards to, obviously there's going to be fiscal and legal, legal ramifications for, for people who are crown funding on a decentralized blockchain-based platform. Um, I know it couldn't be Swarm Corp's responsibility to chase everyone down and make sure that they comply with their local legal authorities, that that'd be a nightmare <laughs> for you guys to worry about uh, all that. I'm sure that's not required just as an exchange isn't accountable for my profits and losses being uh, reported either. But do you think the community will be afraid to invest in corporations that are not recognized by uh, state entities? Do you think they'll be ready to brave the tax man uh, at, should he cometh. I mean, if I put in a thousand bucks on some swarm corp startup and it goes through the moon uh, and I make a million, I guess I could report taxes, but I really shouldn't. I wouldn't necessarily have to, would I? I mean, it would catch me, right? Um, well, I don't speak that, but... I don't know. Um, that's an interesting that's a good question, one. does it not? Yeah, it's a very complicated and interesting question, and it has to do with all peer-to-peer networks and kind of things where there's no real name identity that's enforced, and so to how does it interact with the rest of the sort of legal system and infrastructure? And the truth is, it's very early stages of this, and we're figuring that all out. Uh, what's kind of you know, then there's different access aspects of that. There's sort of what's the sort of ideal situation, um, you know, from the standpoint of individuals um, who are innovating and doing interesting things. There's the kind of what is legally enforceable, right? So the, the, and then there's sort of what governments want to do, and those are kind of all different things. I mean, governments might want to keep everything for a house or you know, I mean, my, I'm sure there's governments right now that be like, oh, the Bitcoin thing, we hate it, we should just push, you know, turn it off or something like that. Um, but they can't, you know, so <laughs> then they're kind of forced in the situation, well, we deal with this, you know, current environment that we find ourselves in. Um, right. So, it ends up being very complicated. <laughs> it sure does. If the thing is, too, I think that, um, I think even, even the big banks, even the big governments, to this degree, probably can see the blockchain technology Maybe not Bitcoin specifically um, itself, but the blockchain technology is something not want to stifle just the internet and say, you know what, if we come down too hard on this thing, we could end up just slowing down the technological growth of mankind and microtransactions. There's so many things that, I mean, geez, you buzz down the highway with the self driving car, I mean, microtransactions and investing in companies and starting startups while you're on your way into the office. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's like, I'm so excited about those kind of possibilities. Like, we have plans that are basically right along those lines. I don't know if you read the coin desk article of sort of Tinder of crowdfunding, but I mean, I think that's so cool. Um, it's, but uh, it's really, really cool as a possibility. So I think I think it actually got to the point where the internet is starting to share a hive mind in, in a really great sense, almost like a colony of ants or bees, to where there's an idea that occurs somewhere in the internet, and like a colony, we don't go, oh, I got credit for it. Give me all the money. Give me all the 100%. We go, I need your help. I need your help. I need your help. You can do this. You can do this. Okay, you can do that. We know there's 100 people doing it. There's a structure. There's a president, a, a second guy, a third guy, whatever. But it's um, it's an organic process. It's, it's, um, it's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It's, it's a swarm. It's a swarm. Yeah. It's a swarm. Yeah, I mean, it really is, you know, why we chose this name, and it's not, you know, just out of the blue. There's a kind of interesting literature on, you know, how collective uh, intelligence emerges from decentralized networks. We give people a high degree of personal autonomy um, and, you know, allow people to sort of freedom, right, the kind of fundamental idea um, of, of 
Um, I think that we probably both think it's very important. If, if not, this is really uh, everyone these days is uh, equal important. Um, but then when you give that to people and they really, you know, start to do really interesting things. Um, so, you know, they kind of identify needs on their own and then they kind of fill those needs and they design the sort of structure that facilitates freedom instead of those that constrict it. Um, and it becomes really exciting and vibrant and dynamic and evolves very quickly. So that's one of the I think is so cool about the internet is, um, you know, once you have a free flow of information, and definitely there's a lot of governments that have tried repeatedly to restrict that, uh, but, and unsuccessfully, generally speaking, although, you know, I wouldn't want to be in Turkey right now or some of these other places, um, you know, it just allows this really, really interesting, you know, process of evolution that just kind of gradually speeds up. Um, because uh, there's this ability to test something, there's an experimental kind of toolkit using this kind of, this kind of language because you just put an idea out there, like, is this a good idea or not? And then it goes through a kind of testing process and everyone sees the data that's associated with it. Oh, does this, does this provide some benefit or not? And if it doesn't, then maybe the same person, and this is again one of the things I love about my you know, home country, the United States, is they kind of a, oh, it failed, bankrupt, whatever, but get up again and try to find it. And uh, you, know, you can keep doing these different things until you get something that is really successful and work. Um, and uh, I don't know, there's, there's a lot of, I don't know, this is just like swarm intelligence, I think, is, is really, really interesting in that way. Um, right. And crypto and systems, because we're like, really taking all the stuff that's been done with the internet and now applying it to finance, which has always been the kind of siloed thing where everyone keeps all the data private and no one shares and then they kind of figure out ways to defraud people and, and other parts of the world that don't know better than the trust. <laughs> um, so it's like kind of woo, revolutionizing all of that. No, absolutely. And I think, that's, I mean, the word revolution is it, man. I mean, what it comes down to is you know, there's this word disruptive, which has been used in the technology space for about a decade now. And it's the same story. I mean, you're talking about someone coming in and doing what something else did, and then it becomes better. Like, once we had the internet, once we had like Yahoo Local, or whatever the first thing was, it, uh, I forget what it was, probably, but, you know, once we had that, yellowpages.com, we didn't need yellow pages of the book. It didn't make sense. Like, that's a lot of real estate for me to store in my drawer, my cabinet, my house. For something that's now digitally stored on my computer permanently and it's updated to the minute. So, I mean, that's just a template for what's happening across the board. And then, if you think of what Swarm Corporation is, it's actually like a super meta layer above the internet. It's because Bitcoin is a meta layer above the internet, uh, it's the finance of the internet or the crypto commerce of the internet. And then, Swarm Corporation is is the the first real company to to say or project to say. Hey, let's let's put the funding aspect and the idea and project generation aspect back in the hands of community, and just to highlight again some of the other people that have done this before you guys. It's not as if you guys are the first people to ever say let's always do crowdfunding. No, it's it's a little more than that. Um, but you know the people that have come before you, the Kickstarters of the world. Um, you know I don't, I, I want to give it to you because you you know you're the guest. What's the obvious flaw in that in that platform? The in Kickstarter, not to go after that yeah, specifically, but there's no give back, you know, and um, there's also, you know, so there's like, and it's really, it is a kind of governmental problem to a certain degree, in that, you know, the people even in the United States are, oh, you know, Obama, oh, we want to enable this kind of dynamic equity thing, but then as soon as they like, they have some like, you know, talking points, but as soon as it goes into execution, it's like red tape, red tape, you know, slow, let's add some additional regulations in here, blah, 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 and then you never get the thing in the, out of the end that is even close to what the kind of nice talking points were. So, um, you know, at Kickstarter, it, fundamentally, you can give back little, you know, trivial tokens of appreciation, um, but you can't, you know, if I go out, like this Oculus Rift did this, $2 million plus in funding from, you know, 9,000 plus um, donors or whatever put into that. And then when <laughs> Oculus goes back and sells to Facebook a little bit later for over $2 billion, those people, you know, maybe <laughs> they got some kind of nice T-shirt or something. But <laughs> it's not really, um, like, just compensation. Um, and so... 
um, you know, I think you know, it kind of needs, um, you know, to put it in a simple way, the kind of Uber or kind of, uh, you know, Airbnb or kind of mentality to say, like, look, we're providing a very real value to the, the citizens, the users, everyone who has this project, and, and these kind of governments are a little bit kind of standing in the way of this innovation. And, um, you know, we can do it. I mean, we have the technology to do it and provide this really good service. Um, and how can we kind of actually allow this, you know, democratic way of doing finance to actually flourish instead of, you know, getting hit by these, uh, you know, regulatory walls that the, you know, incumbents always want to keep there. So um, I don't want to come after you too hard on this one, uh, Joel, because you're my guest, and, and I really thank you for being on the show. But this word democracy, is, it sticks in my... A, a, a thorn in my crawl a little bit, and I know the words are only as good as how well we define them and how much we can agree on those definitions, but yeah. just I in a grand scheme to, to for the viewer, um, my concern is with regards to democracy, and I know it's played yeah. out differently in America or in Greece or in this era or that yeah. era, but in terms of when you say democracy, I looked at the definition because I see it, the word itself used a little bit around the Swarm Corporation website and branding. Um, I looked up the word democracy, and it, it basically says um, rule of the majority. It's kind of, you know, there's a lot of definitions, but it could be represented as the majority or whatever. So I think not that Swarm Corporation is invalidated by this by any means, but that maybe to look at that wording and to say maybe that's just a way that we can reach people, and we use the word democracy to reach people, but truthfully I think it's better than democracy because it's actually in a democracy when the, when the majority says there's going to be a tax, or there's going to be a this, or there's going to be a that. No. All other parties are forced into it. Swarm Corporation has a lot more flexibility. and. Uh, uh, no, absolutely. And, you know, but I, and, yeah, but there's a lot of problems. my point, I don't mean to split hairs. No, no, I would agree with you. So I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, we're not like... Uh, we're, for, to be honest, we're not stuck with one kind of particular political mindset or framework. I mean, I think we really want to allow this innovation um, to happen in a variety of different directions. And when we use the word democracy, we don't mean it in this sort of like majority role, rule is the necessity. We mean it in um, we want to give power back to the people. <laughs> power to the people. Yeah, we can all get on board with power to the people, of course. And, uh, and you know... There are so many people who are trying to stop that from happening. So, and and democracy is where the people understand that that right. sort of. Right, and and just to make clear to my viewers, because my viewers hate the word democracy because we associate it with what has happened, where by you say, oh well, we all get to vote, and if you remember back to voting, it was white male landowners, and then it was the three fifths rule, and there were so many horrible atrocities in the history of American democracy that uh -huh. it's time to have an internet world of democracy where we can take the term back or reinvent it to mean. No. You know, one Satoshi, I'm, one vote, you know? Or. I'm very, very open to those kind of suggestions as well. Like, we, we've had some internal discussions about that, and we're like, we don't really think democracy is the best word, but then we're like, well, we don't really have a good alternative either. Volunteerism. Um, yeah, so... Volunteerism or anarchy. Uh, yeah, so there's <laughs> a lot other... Anarchy, like, it's a little rough. You know, there's ones that people understand um, and ones that don't, and even anarchy, right? Different people understand that in different ways, um, and then it becomes very complicated uh, depending on exactly what um, your real viewpoint is. So yeah. our, our goal yeah. is, I guess, to, you know, I don't know, like I said, give power back to people. You're creating <laughs> a really simple platform that once once the people get their hands on this thing, or it's going to feel just as intuitive as your bank card or just as intuitive as your, your email inbox. You're going to say, you know what? I got a couple extra Bitcoin kicking around today. I feel like investing. Let me go see what companies are out there. Oh, this looks interesting. This looks interesting. Let me throw a couple bucks here, a couple bucks there, a couple bits here, a couple bits there. And, uh, you know, I think 10 years from now, we'll be looking at our portfolio on Swarm Corp, Swarm Corp and saying, wow, I'm up 600% uh, this year on 15 different, you know, companies and uh, only picked two losers. So good, good for me, you know, and I think it, it'll be really exciting to say, I picked that one, I picked that one. And, you know, when you go to the store to buy something, you go, this was made by a swarm corporation. Like this, this product I'm buying, I buy this and it pays me back. <laughs> I'm getting a dividend from this purchase. No, yeah, no, and even cooler than that, you know, that there's always a sort of due diligence aspect that's existed. You know, people like, oh, we can't allow normal people to participate because they'll be, you know, easily defrauded or something. E even though they do let people like, you know, spend their whole paycheck on the lottery or something like that. Sure. Um, but um, 
you know, and this is another awesome thing that, that goes into this whole decentralized, you know, networks and uh, individual autonomy is that you can have this, you know, system that says, oh, look, like, Randall is really good at figuring out which kind of projects are going to be successful or not. Um, and, you know, he goes and endorses them or whatever. I should just follow what kind of, you know, Randall's uh, advice right. is. Right, right. And, and, then, and then it can become a, a way for people who want to be advisors or who want to be, you know, business you know, counselors or whatever, you know, it, it, I bet you as you guys are sitting around still working on Swarm Corporation internally, there's got to be brainstorms where you're saying, and this could happen, and like you got to still be coming up with new uses and applications for the, for the platform, I'd imagine. Oh, yeah, like every day we get also really exciting proposals from people who want to, you, you know, launch their things on Swarm. Um, uh, you know, and then we also kind of evolve our thinking on, you know, the, the kind of best way to, um, you know, get out the first few pro projects and, you know, some of the kind of architectural stuff like around this due diligence aspect. Um, so it's just, it's very exciting. Like, I, I couldn't, I don't know, I don't think I could be I'm working. A, I'm a little envious. I mean, I'm part of a very exciting startup as well, CoinPros, but, you know, just, just to see what you guys are doing, it, you know, even my skyscraper feels a little short next to yours, but... Um, I will say this. I want to take a moment uh, editorially for the for the uh, viewer again to circle back and fill in some of the blanks. I know that me and you know each other a little bit from you know talking beforehand and knowing each other's background. I've I've been hearing about the Swarm Corporation and I seen now I've seen uh, Kathy Reisowitz's interview earlier today uh, or just moments ago actually, which was with yourself as well. I found that to be quite uh, interesting how she uh, you know approached uh, discussing the issues with you. Um, I want to uh, elucidate a little bit for the for the listener specifically what we're talking about for some of these things. If you might be a Bitcoin noob or a 101 kind of person, um, if you're familiar with Bitcoin at all, great. We're going to start from there. If not, go search Bitcoin. Go to uh, you know uh, you use we use coins or <laughs> that's what they used to say. Go to that, but you know go to Reddit forward slash r slash Bitcoin or go to CoinPros.com in a couple days and we'll have everything there. But basically, uh, if you know what Bitcoin is, Swarm is like um, the supercharged 2.0 application of Bitcoin or of the blockchain. And what it does essentially is, I'm going to read this directly off your website so I don't misspeak uh, on your behalf. Swarm is a crowd, uh, crowdfunding platform powered by Bitcoin 2.0 technology. It allows the users of a product to also be its investors. Everybody benefits as the platform grows. So essentially, um, just like a Kickstarter, but you get to be an actual paid uh, investor. Uh, so, so on Kickstarter, I, I invest in uh, Oculus Rift. I get a cool mug or a T-shirt, or I get my name written up on a website for 20 bucks, and then they go sell it to Facebook and make two billion. And the people that were behind the scenes, and God bless them all for doing it. I'm sure Oculus Rift will be awesome when it finally comes out. But um, they all got really rich, and they used your money to do so. So in the future, maybe you get the coffee mug, maybe you get the T-shirt, but maybe you also get a couple shares in the company. And uh, when they get rich, you get rich too. And then you can take that money and reinvest in some more companies. I want to get into some of the details of Swarm Corporation. Um, if you want to go to find out, you'd go to swarmcorp.com, S-W-A-R-M, corp.com. That's their main homepage. Is that correct, uh, Josh? That's the place to go? Or Joel, that I'm sorry. Sir. Yeah. And, and it's worth noting that, you know, our fundraiser is still going on, and you can still get some Swarm coins and own a part of this revolution. So, uh, you know, I That's think That's the next thing we got to really hash out, my man. Um, not to skip over that. I know we're both excited. Why are there, for the for the viewer, why are there how, man, 100 million, right? There's 100 million yeah. Swarm coin. Why are there 100 million? When are they going to be distrib distributed? And is a Swarm coin all I need, or how is that going to be related to actually buying into companies? So explain that, so, that a little bit. Okay, yeah. So uh, there was this, you know, Andreas Antonopoulos, who was one of the main Bitcoin commentators, said he expected there to be, you know, 100 million or 100 millions of kind of coins. So it, this, you know, number was kind of um, stuck in my mind as sort of the future where it's not just Bitcoin, it's a massive distributed network where everyone can, you know, have their own project and their own coin and, um, you know, use it to fundraise or, you know, for their project to, to kind of evolve. So. I was, that's kind of where that number came from. And, um, you know, right now in the pre-sale, you know, we're, we're selling a kind of certain number of those. Um, and all you need to do is basically show up at the website, uh, whatever, create a counter wallet so you can actually hold your Swarm coins and then put some Bitcoin in that counter wallet and then send it to the address that's on our website. 
um, and then you get some some swarm coins back. And um, you know those swarm coins basically uh, allow you certain kind of you know privileges that are part of our network. So you can get early access, for example, to you know projects. So that kind of we have a whole pipeline of really really interesting things that are coming out. Um, and so, you know, people who have swarm coins will be able to participate in those. Um, and, and also, there's other kind of perks that come for being, you know, part of our network. So you kind of were like, you know, continually issuing different kinds of coins um, to people who have swarm coins. So, you know, right now you you get to vote in the kind of proposal um, that we've just uh, we put out there to say, like, what do you think the future of the swarm should be? Um, you know, there, we're kind of having this event in London uh, in about a week. Um, and which we're going to be also releasing some information, and you know, we'll we'll send some of that out via email as well, but or whatever other services. But um, you know, it'll sort of be available first to kind of people who have our sort of gold ticket, and you know, we're we're also for other projects that kind of launch. Um, we're always you know in this idea of giving back, and it's very tricky because there's some kind of legal limitations to what we can do and can't do. Um, but, uh, even though <laughs> we wish there weren't, you know, but there very much are. That's we're kind of constrained to the degree uh, by this stuff. But um, you know, our, that's our goal is to always kind of be building this network and uh, and giving back to everyone who's participated. Absolutely, Joel. Um, in the IPO phase right now, just to reiterate to everyone. I go to swarmcorporate.com right now, create a counter, or if I don't already have one, I create a counterparty wallet, and from there send uh, some some funds to to your organization and receive Swarm Corporation coins back in return. Um, is that right? That's that? right. That's good. Mm -hmm. There's, there's okay. one Bitcoin address you send to it, and then it automatically sends you back um, this Swarm coins. Super simple. Um, from there. X, you know, amount of time goes by, a month or two, whatever it may be, and I have my holdings of Swarm Coin. Uh, that'd be the name, right? Swarm Coin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got X amount of Swarm Coin, whatever, hundred thousand, ten thousand, whatever I ponied up for, and I, on your website or whatever the case may be, I'm going to start seeing opportunities for for things to invest in. It'll be strictly on your website, or will this be things cropping up all over the place? Um. Yeah, it won't be. I mean. They'll be on a website, but you know this is all done sort of through these peer-to-peer, -peer, you know, de decentralized um, exchanges or whatever kind of infrastructure. So you know, our website will not be the exclu you know, only way that you can access it, but it probably will be the easiest way for people to access it. Right. Um, and, you know, we'll also do the normal things like sending out emails to people and um, you know, whatever kind of communication methods we we have available. So. The kind of interesting thing is with the coins, we don't necessarily know who, um, you know, you are, who has the coin. So we can't like we don't necessarily have like you know personal information about you. So you have to kind of uh, we're working on the best way to communicate with people right now. Well, I mean, obviously, like you said, you'll 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 have all the normal avenues. So even if whether I was invested or not, if I wanted to follow you guys on Twitter or you know join your mailing list, I'm sure I could do that. Um, and what, might as well. Right now, shout out where, where people can find find you guys on Twitter and uh, elsewhere across the web. Yeah, so um, you know uh, our Twitter handle is Swarm Corp, um, and uh, same as our website, and uh, that's also the same place you can find us on Facebook. So Facebook.com. Pretty easy. Nice. That's the way to do it. I'm a marketing guy, so I, I applaud you for that. Good job. Um, <clears throat> we got we covered a lot of the one-on-one -on -one stuff. I don't want to take up too too much of your time. I had a couple more questions I wanted to get into, and just to make sure I don't leave any gaps in the in the pavement here for people to get tripped up on. Okay, so just walking everyone through this logistically, they get the swarm coins in your IPO phase, which is taking place now, and now down the line there's there's these projects we can start investing in. Am I exchanging swarm coins for something else, like let's say Oculus Rift coin, or would it be? Now, this is, managed. this is something that's a little bit, you know, hasn't been determined. I think, you know, people who are listing projects in us will have the, um, you know, ability to, you know, decide exactly what they want to take in, and probably the majority will be in Bitcoins for these other projects. Um, but, you know, we're also, will encourage people to, you know, have a part that can be invested in Swarmcoin and, and other things like that. So you will be able to participate um, via Swarm Coins, and also the amount of, you know, in this sort of early phase, the amount of access that you have is proportional to your Swarm Coin holding. So, you know, if you have a lot of Swarm Coin, then 
it's more beneficial if you know, assuming you want to get involved in these other projects. But we're we're really excited by the one. So I'm excited. I happen to have lost one point. So I'm glad I do because yeah. uh, you know there's really really exciting things that are going to be coming out of this. So. Sure. So well, Stormcoin is is its own really uh, financial uh, instrument. I guess you could say, in a sense, right? It's it's like a it's like a centralized holdings for all of the projects that come out in the future. Off of like, its value is shared, or its its value is derived from the shared value of all the projects that 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 Swarm produces. Correct? Is that? No, no, that's absolutely true. So, um, you know, you will get uh, you know coins for these you know uh, other coins that we launched as well. So. You know, the more that you have, uh, you know, if you have a bunch of swarm coins, you'll get, you know, more back. So it's a kind of like a, a, the value of that is to a certain degree the value of the network and the value of the kind of projects that come out of the network. Um, so that's I think that's kind of what will drive the the you know the utility or whatever of the swarm coin. Right. Yeah. It's uh it's community driven. Really? And it's, uh, self self uh, I guess regulatory and self propagating. Yeah. Almost like Bitcoin itself, almost like the blockchain. You know, it uh, it regulates itself and it doesn't need any external pushes to to go. I mean, I guess you could say mining, but you know, there's no short. There's an incentive there, so there's no short of miners. Um, yeah, and there's just this cool thing from you know a programmer standpoint, which is really my own background, that ability to like program yourself out of existence, where you know this kind of stuff is really just this infrastructure is there to allow things to be very very. Freely floating without any kind of that, um, you know, necessity of some middleman. Because I think so many of the issues that exist in the current system is because there's always a middleman that you have to go through instead of being able to directly participate. So, absolutely, yeah. So, so we're talking about crypto equity here on the Voluntary Virtues Network with my man Joel, and uh, Joel is from Swarm Corporation, and Swarm Corporation is a crypto equity play that gives the investor and the user uh, a possibility to uh, wear the same hat and be the same person. <laughs> um, and um, <clears throat> Joel has recently appeared on a number of different broadcasts to ex explain what this uh, project Swarm has to offer. He and his project have been written up in the Wall Street Journal, Bitcoin Magazine, Coindesk, Follow the Coin, and more. So we're glad to be among that company. We wish you guys nothing but the most of success going forward. Um, what other what other things can we look forward to? What would you like the audience to uh, be mindful of? This is probably going to air in the next two or three days, so jump on anything um, that that's timely that people can uh, go and seek out. Um, I think you know just. We have this kind of um, interesting model for engagement, and that we have these sort of you know people who are really feel the power of this kind of second wave of you know distributed autonomous organizations and Bitcoin 2.0 technology and the ability to really uh, allow more autonomy and the kind of evolution around these things. Um, and we just I would really love to hear from people who who have interesting ideas. Join our kind of we have this you know Skype channel that we you know have a lot of kind of um, internal dialogue and you know kind of ideas bounce back and forth um, and just you know the kind of more engagement um, and project proposals and feedback and all that sort of thing I think really is is what we need and you know um, so I like would just invite anyone to join us and um, you know I don't know you can you know tweet to me uh, fractastical is my Twitter name or um, you know, Swarm Corp uh, on Twitter, and you know, we can add you to that channel, and you can kind of get involved with your, you know, hands on. That's, that's what. That's what I love is like you have the ability to build these things yourself, and you don't have to like wait for someone else. So, well, so. it just goes to show you guys talk to talk. You don't just walk to walk. I mean, I, I kind of just bounced into your acquaintance a few hours ago this morning on a on a thread on that same uh, Skype thread, and you were gracious enough to just jump on this interview with me real quick and give me some awesome content for my show, which is super awesome. Appreciated. Um, we're going to drop your links in the show notes and descriptions um, and we'll get this out on social media as much as we can I wanted to ask you another question oh yes from uh, one of my co-founders uh, over at the uh, CoinPros project Tim, Tim Frost he asks um, how soon if we were to issue I mean this is a hypothetical but if we were to issue an equity um, for our project for CoinPros a website if we were to issue that on Swarm Corporation, 
when would we be able to start that process and when would it be able to go public? I mean, is it still kind of floaty or is it something we could start to plan around right now? Uh, we have the full infrastructure for being able to do that now. Um, you know, in particular, if you have an engaged audience that's reasonably crypto savvy, there's really nothing that, you know, would stop um, us from, like, adding you into even our first batch and you know, announcing very, very soon. So um, gotcha. that, that kind of possibility is there immediately. You know, we're going to be constantly adding infrastructure and possibilities around it. So um, We might be talking know. off the... Uh off the video in a little while, but because uh, we, we, we want to raise money through a crypto equity, but there's there obviously are a few other choices, and Swarm is starting to look like kind of the clear front runner for a lot of reasons, but not to get political because there's so many, and I don't want to offend any of these other 2.0 applications who are trying to do similar things, uh, even if they may not look like they're as... And I know you're not actually in competition because you, you, you're a separate thing, but... Um, for the for the viewer, uh, this is an emerging space. This is a crazy space, and uh, definitely go over to Swarm Corporation, um, check out what they are doing, buy some Swarm Coin, turn your Bitcoin into Swarm Coin right now. Uh, Bitcoin has been pretty flat recently. Not to say that it's going to stay flat. This is not investment advice because I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not qualified to give you that. But just as you know, if you were looking for something to diversify your your crypto portfolio right now, and you have your Light and your Doge and your your various different types of cryptocurrency, and you think, you know what? How can I really do something different than just buy into a new altcoin? Um, I think that Swarm Corporation definitely delivers that exciting alternative, and I'm going to be purchasing uh, more and more Swarm Coin as on top of what I've been able to, you know, stash away so far. Uh, and uh, you know, because I think that it's an investment not just in the uh, idea that people want to take ownership of their own ideas and not have to give away so much to uh, venture capitalists and uh, big banks and all that. But also, it's an investment in all the future companies that are going to come around mm -hmm. and build something huge on the on the Bitcoin infrastructure in the future. So uh, kudos to you, and thank you for coming on. Thank you, Randall. I mean, I encourage you, know, you and everyone else. It's, it's so cool to be part of this moment. And, um, you know, we want everyone who can to, like, own part of the revolution because this is, like... You know, this is really the bleeding edge. We're kind of on the vanguard, really, really pushing forward this, you know, uh, this awesome technology. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited. And um, just maybe final note, we'll be announce announcing some new projects in, in London at our, our, our party on July 10th. So anyone who's around should definitely try and be there. All right, everyone check it out. Joel, I'm going to have you back. Uh, hopefully you're not too busy uh, in maybe a few weeks or a few months when there's some more news to share. But... For now, uh, we're going to wrap it up here, and uh, thank you so much, Joel. We'll, uh, we'll see you soon. Thanks, Randall. All right, take care. Thank you.